for the whole history of biology, there have been real problems of understanding the relationship between genetics, development and evolution. How does evolutionary change occur? Now, um, everyone knows that natural selection, according to Darwin, is a slow process whereby um, organisms, um, as a result of random mutation in their genes, the fitter of the organisms will survive and propagate their own. But there was also a long-lasting heresy which predates Darwin, it's called Lamarckism, after the French biologist who first developed the idea, and that is that experiences during the lifetime of an organism can also be inherited, transferred to the next generation. Hardline Darwinists have rejected overwhelmingly this as a, the ultimate heresy of genetics and evolution. Evolution, according to Darwinian natural selection, in its modern form, only operates on the genes and operates as a result of random mutation. So nothing that happens in the actual lifetime of an organism can actually change um, its outcome and the inheritance of the next generation. Back in the 1930s, a polymath biologist called Conrad Hal Waddington produced an experiment which actually seemed to suggest that the um, transmi heritable transmission of, of an acquired characteristic could indeed be transmitted to the next generation. But a pretty extreme experiment. He took Drosophila, which are the um, workhorse organisms for geneticists during the 1930s and really right way up to the 1950s, fruit flies. Um, and he subjected the embryo of the fruit fly to um, ether. And the developed Drosophila um, had a particular malformation. Instead of a single thorax and a single pair of wings, it grew a double thorax and it had um, four wings instead of two. Generation after generation, Waddington submitted his flies to the ether and the bithorax form appeared. After about 20 generations, the bithorax form would appear without using ether at all. So in some way, the experience during the development of the organism had actually been transmitted heritably to its, um, its offspring. It was ignored or dismissed by Waddington's um, contemporaries. It was an extreme laboratory experiment. Anyhow, it might actually get wiped out during subsequent generations, and it was an aberration. But more and more, evidence began to accumulate that this indeed could be the case. Um, and very simple experiments, for example, of feeding a pregnant or a lactating rabbit on diet with a very strong scent. Um, juniper berries are the ones used in the experiment. The preference for a juniper-scented diet is transmitted from the pregnant rabbit to its offspring. Perhaps nothing surprising about that, but what is surprising is that without the juniper present in, for the offspring, their offspring, that is the grandchildren of the first generation, and the great-grandchildren of the first generation, also prefer a juniper diet. So a preference acquired during the lifetime of one organism has been transmitted generationally down to others. This is epigenetic inheritance. So the whole concept of how evolution occurs has been opened up in a much wider way. Of course there's natural selection. Um, no one, this is not a Darwinian heresy. In fact, Darwin would probably have welcomed um, these experiments. But it is a heresy so far as hardline um, molecular reductionists and molecular geneticists are. And it's become known as the extended evolutionary synthesis. And my betting, as a non-geneticist, as a non-evolutionary biologist, but as a neuroscientist, is that this is going to be one of the most exciting developments in biology over the course of the next decades.